This talk is a guide to the psychiatric medication escitalopram. In this talk, I've attempted to put everything a psychiatrist needs to know about escitalopram on a single slide in less than five minutes. Escitalopram is also known by the brand name Lexapro and often looks like a round white tablet. It is an SSRI antidepressant and works by inhibiting the serotonin transporter, thus increasing the neurotransmitter serotonin in the brain. I consider it to be a low-risk medication as it has low side effects, does not usually require monitoring, and has only rare serious side effects. I also consider it to be a low-cost medication, as a one-month supply usually costs $10 or less. It is FDA-approved for treatment of MDD and GAD in adults and children. However, it is often used off-label for other indications. The usual dose range is 10 to 20 milligrams, and the usual half-life is 27 to 32 hours. The usual onset of therapeutic action is within one to two weeks, though maximum therapeutic effects are usually not achieved until four to six weeks. Withdrawal effects may occur and are uncomfortable but not life-threatening. To avoid withdrawal effects, the medication dose should be reduced by no more than 50% every one week. It usually does not require monitoring, but may require monitoring with EKGs if you are increasing above the FDA maximum dose or if a patient is high risk for cardiac problems. It has few drug interactions, as it is only a weak inhibitor of CYP2D6. Common side effects include GI effects such as diarrhea and nausea, GU effects such as sexual side effects, and neuro effects such as insomnia, sedation, and headaches. Rare but serious side effects include angle closure glaucoma, bleeding, fragility fractures, hyponatremia, SIADH, manic activation, QT prolongation, serotonin syndrome, and suicidal thoughts and behaviors. Its use is contraindicated if the patient has an allergy to escitalopram or if the patient is concurrently taking linazolid, an MAOI antidepressant, methylene blue, or pimazide. And it has a black box warning for increased suicidal thoughts and behaviors in children and young adults. Let's next review special cases. Escitalopram is cleared by the liver. As such, it usually requires no dose adjustments in patients with renal impairment but in patients with hepatic impairment, you should start at a lower dose. Escitalopram is a preferred antidepressant in pregnant patients. However, it is associated with increased risk of neonatal adaptation syndrome and persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn when taken by mothers during the third trimester. Additionally, escitalopram is present in breast milk. Let's next discuss dosing. For the sake of simplicity, the doses given here are those used for MDD. I'll review the usual initial dose, maximum dose, goal dose, and titration schedule. Escitalopram may be dosed anywhere in the range of 2.5 to 40 milligrams. The initial dose is 10 milligrams for adults, 10 milligrams for 12 to 18 year olds, and 5 milligrams for those 65 and older. The FDA maximum dose is 30 milligrams for adults and 20 milligrams for 12 to 18 year olds. For MDD in adults, the goal dose is 10 to 20 milligrams. And for GAD in adults, the goal dose is also 10 to 20 milligrams. For OCD in adults, the goal dose is 20 to 40 milligrams. You can see that this range exceeds the usual FDA maximum. Nevertheless, doses of 40 milligrams have been found to be effective for some patients. For pediatric patients, the goal doses are 10 to 20 milligrams for both MDD and GAD. And for geriatric patients, the goal dose is 10 milligrams for both MDD and GAD. As you can see, in most cases, the goal dose will be from 10 to 20 milligrams. The usual titration schedule is 10 milligrams every one week for both adults and children. I'd like to conclude with a few final tips. I consider escitalopram to be the first line SSRI in most cases. This is partially due to its high efficacy and acceptability relative to other SSRIs and antidepressants. In fact, one of the most rigorous meta analyses to date comparing different antidepressants in the treatment of adults with MDD found that escitalopram was in the top 10 of most effective antidepressants and in the top 3 of most acceptable antidepressants. Finally, you should always complete an interaction check with the patient's current medications prior to starting a new medication. And for more information, I usually direct patients to the website for the National Alliance on Mental Illness, a nonprofit organization with excellent patient information resources. That's the end of this talk. I hope this is a useful guide to escitalopram. Thank you.